Hey, Brian Beeler coming to you alongside Kevin O'Brien from the Storage Review Lab. We've got another review we're looking at today, and this one's of a QNAP switch. They've been in switching for a long time, and now they're uh, continuing to roll out more 2.5 gig switching for NASs like this. Yeah, it makes sense. They're getting faster, and people want uh, faster file transfers and whatnot uh, to and fro their uh, NAS platforms. Right, and so we're seeing QNAP. This is the uh, TS453D that we're reviewing, and you can't really tell visually, but on the back side here, there are a couple of uh, just what it looks like ether regular Ethernet ports, and instead of one gig, they're two and a half gig, yeah. which means for some of your workloads, they could be two and a half times faster. Is that right? Yeah, it works out, uh, although it depends on what you have uh, from a storage perspective. So not everything will, not everything can take advantage of them, but they're on there because a lot of these guys are getting faster, and some people need that. Okay, well, let's take a look at the, uh, the system itself. Why don't you, Kevin, walk us through what we're looking at, uh, left to right or right to left, your call. So left to right, uh, there are eight RJ45 one gig ports, um, and then there are two SFP plus 10 gig ports, and then at the far right, there are, uh, it's an SFP plus 10 gig and a multi-speed one, 2.5, five, and 10 gig port. Okay, and now this is the QSW3081C that we're looking at. Um, but like we said, they've got many other models, and uh, this is unmanaged. It's also fanless, so it's quiet, right, if it sits on a desktop or somewhere near your system. Yes, it even has a very fancy uh, power plug off the uh, back corner that doesn't really depend on which angle it's facing. It's, it's kind of gimmicky. Um, I'd prefer a um, uh, just normal power connection because... If you ever need to uh, replace the power adapter or try and go generic, I mean, right, you have to you're have the, stuck with something that has the a fancy very, one. Yeah. So as we think about uh, what's going on in the NAS space, QNAP's putting two and a half in, I guess, pretty much all their new units that are designed for SMBs on up. Uh, we've seen some in Asus store. Presumably, others will get there. Uh, in our talks with the people that make the components, the actual uh, the actual chips and connectors, the cost to go from one to two and a half is almost nothing. So we expect fully that, that most NAS going forward will have these ports on them to bridge the gap between two and a half and, and 10 gig, really. Uh, when but it's not used a lot in the enterprise yet. So it's been, right. it's like a, di a diverging market. So we're left in an interesting position where to test these systems we need a switch like this or a little beefier ones that have a 10 gig uplink. Uh, we move that into our uh, normal switching environment so our VMware environment can support. Since right now, VMware, um, I haven't looked in through uh, E6i7, but uh, 6.7 didn't have support for a lot of the multi-mode stuff. So it was more of a, you're depending on um, uh, diverging markets of the pro server home space and then the enterprise, and right now there's just not a lot of good overlap, so you have to have a lot of those uh, little uplink ports to go into uh, your traditional switches. Well, but you've got two things, right? Because we've got 10 gig on some of these things, and 10 gig and 10 gig switching is expensive, or more expensive yeah. than, than Ethernet. And I think 2.5 is really just trying to plug that gap of what can you get, how do you get, can you get a little more performance without the cost? Yeah, and a lot of these guys, I mean, you looked at, uh, if you look at Synology right now, you have uh, their platforms with, uh, uh, well, one port of RG45, two or four that are just one gig, and you really have to, like, lag them together, do multipathing to take advantage of higher bandwidth. This guy, you have two ports that can get uh, faster than uh, four one gig ports. Well, let's talk about that. So we did the review. We posted it uh, recently and you ran some numbers to show with this system here, one versus two and a half, right? Yeah. So let's take a look at that. So we had, uh, and this, we cover the uh, different specs and uh, the capabilities of the switch, but uh, the main uh, area for a um, lot of guys interested in this is what's the advantage? So we test a single port, uh, and this was using the uh, switch where. Um, uh, we had our 10 gig uplink into the lab, and then uh, for the 2.5 switch uh, capabilities, we used this uh, little combo port to go into uh, the back of the um, uh, the NAS, and then uh, to keep things consistent, we just moved it over to the 1 gig port. 
Oh, we uh, even used the, the same cable for yes. yeah, very good. Minimized uh, re- reconfig uh, time. So we're looking at uh, SIFS and iSCSI, both between uh, 1 gig and uh, 2.5 gig. And for uh, SIFS in the 4K, it's not really a strong area for seeing improvements. Um, but uh, when you look at uh, the differences between iSCSI, though, which do have, uh, which will have a stronger impact for uh, uh, small block random transfers, we go from um, like upper 20s to almost 70,000 IOPS for uh, 4K random read. 4K random write, this is more of a uh, performance limitation of the rate 10 group, but even there you saw a subtle improvement. Um, and latency as a result, I mean, that goes down. It's it's more of a uh, equation of it got faster, so latency will drop. Sure. Um, and then when we start looking at the uh, sequential numbers again, this is, you're not going to see a huge improvement there between 1 and uh, 2.5 for uh, SIFs on uh, small block sequential. But when you look at the, uh, the iSCSI transfers, I mean, you're looking at almost uh, three times the impact for that, for just switching to that one port. Um, and then now on the um, large block sequential transfers, this got the uh, improvement across the board, and you're basically saturating line rate in that. So one gig is going to um, come into around 150 megs a second, and then the uh, uh, 2.5 gig ports will be good for maybe around 280 or so megs a second read. So huge improvement there. So if you can take advantage of it, it's worthwhile. So the one thing is in our testing, we just use the one port because that's all we have available in this particular switch. Uh, you, if you could use both ports on the back of the NAS, you would expect better numbers still even just with hard drives? Oh yeah, hard drives, uh, well hard drives you might not be able to push it as hard unless you're doing like RAID 0, but SSDs, I mean definitely. You're looking at, uh, that's performance of two SATA drives in uh, RAID 1. I mean, you'd easily be able to hit that if you had uh, this guy outfitted with uh, hard drives and some caching, you'd be able to get those numbers. Okay, so it, as we've seen, you know, this isn't exhaustive intensive testing and it's just one port of two and a half gig, but for what is a relatively affordable price for an unmanaged silent uh, switch, I mean, it's, yeah. it's pretty strong. And as we can see, if you've got a modern uh, NAS that has these ports on the back, yeah, maybe you'd prefer 10 gig, but not everyone's going to put 10 gig in their small they, office or, or home lab. They do have a lot of options there. I mean, they have a five port uh, switch with just 2.5 gig uh, ports on it. Uh, they have more managed offerings. It really, I mean, uh, there are a bunch in the yeah, in it, the portfolio. It depends on what you're looking for. This, if you have um, number of different, let's say, uh, eight computers in your environment. Connect your eight computers over one gig, have a 10 gig uplink into like a backup device, have 2.5 into um, your uh, NAS. It gives you some options for a, eh, I don't want to say moderate work group because when, when I think moderate, I'm thinking of like maybe 100 clients. But sure. uh, th- in this case, you have a small environment that can be easily handled with one switch. Well, and for for people that are buying the QNAP uh, NAS for a new deployment, really easy to just drop the QNAP. Yeah. switch into the cart to configure uh, everything out there that you need in a, in a remote location or for uh, you know, managed service providers that are putting these things together for their customers or uh, uh, you know, to, to get the, the whole solution out there for a small retailer or whatever. I mean, it's just easy to put together. You might have some concerns with VLANs. I mean, you can't do VLANs on an unmanaged switch. But right. for those really small use cases where you just need a switch to get the performance around, I mean, it's hard to beat that value. All right. Well, there you have it. Thanks for tuning in and we'll be back soon with additional videos.